بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أشرك بك وأنا أعلم واستغفرك لمن أعلم Continue on in our discussion of Tawbah, of repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to bestow His mercy and grace and favor upon us, forgive us of our sins, and bless us with ikhlas, with thabat ala sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabihi al-kareem, Qulil ladhina kafaru in yanhu yagfir lahum ma qad salaf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabihi al-kareem, Say to those who disbelieve, if they stop their disbelief, their past shall be forgiven. Letting us know the importance of Tawbah, Allah that returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, repenting, that even from those who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they repent from their disbelief and come to Islam and Iman and faith, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them. And this is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is tawab rahim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the often uh, the, the one who accepts repentance and the most forgiving, the most merciful, tabarak wa ta'ala. And as we mentioned, that when a person commits one of the major sins, that they must make tawbah, that they must repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not sufficient just to feel sorrow. And so the conditions of Tawbah have to be met, as we mentioned before. And those conditions, just to briefly go over them and actually provide some details, and most of this is coming from Imam Nawawi with the explanation in, uh, in his book, Riyadh al-Salihin, with the explanation of Ben Uthaymin, rahimahullah ta'ala, and I encourage uh, myself and others to read and study this very important book, and especially the chapter about Tawbah, if you want to know about repentance, repentances in Islam and forgiveness and you want it to be in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then that book is very important for you to return to so from amongst the conditions of repenting to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for the sins that we've committed and we already mentioned that there was three main conditions but in addition to those conditions, or including those conditions, is of, is of course that you have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned this already prior to this uh, sitting, that you have to have sincerity to Allah. You have to have ikhlas, that in every type of worship, and because tawbah is a type of worship, repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, coming back to Him is a type of worship that you must do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You must abandon your sin and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and be determined to leave that sin and stopping that sin strictly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yearning for the face of Allah, the majestic, the exalted, and hoping that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall accept his repentance. And this should be the objective of uh, seeking repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that it should not be d done for some issues of the dunya, you know, in order to see reward from the people or praise from the people for doing a sin. As the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, which is well known to us all, In this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which shows us the importance of having correct intention in all acts of worship and Toba being inclusive in those acts of worship, the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily actions are tied to the intentions, and everyone shall get that for which he intended. Therefore, he who migrates for Allah and his messenger, then he has migrated for Allah and his messenger, meaning that he will get reward. And he who migrates uh, for some worldly matter or worldly gain, or to take some woman in marriage, then he, has, uh, he will get that for which he migrated for. And this hadith shows us the importance we can apply this to Toba as well, because Toba, as we mentioned, is an act of ibadah, it's an act of worship. And by a person 
seeking uh, to come closer to Allah and seeking to repent to Allah, they have to do it seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, removing themselves from that sin and seeking the hereafter. The second condition uh, with regards to repentance that we have to be aware of is that an individual should leave that sin and regret. They should regret the sin that they committed. They should feel sorrow. And this is an illustration or this illustrates whether they're sincere or not or whether they are truthful with regards to their repentance. If they don't feel any sorrow, their hearts are hard. Their hearts are covered with ran, as the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi mentioned in the authentic hadith, which is an explanation of the ayat where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, "Bel rana ala qulubihim bima kano yaksibun," that they have a covering on their heart for what they used to do, letting us know that when we do sins, it increases a covering of our heart. And the Prophet Sallallahu explained that ayat by saying that when you do sins, that it, 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 when you commit a sin, it produces a black dot on your heart, like a covering. And then when you do more sins, it increases in the area that it covers, so much so to if you keep sinning, it covers your heart. And by doing righteous deeds and making toba, it begins to remove that filth from your heart. So this is the state of the believer in that we want to strive to remove the filth from our heart and that we have to be aware that in order to show that we're sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is we should feel sa sadness and we should feel stress and be distressed that we committed a sin, some transgression against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the boundaries set by Allah to wa ta'ala. And then the, the next condition the third condition is that a, a, an individual should discontinue the act of disobedience or sinfulness, as we mentioned. And this is one of the most important uh, uh, conditions amongst those conditions, but they're all uh, very important because you have to have a sincerity. Sincerity is, 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 is uh, more important, in fact, because if you're not sincere, and you stop the sin, you stop it for something of this worldly life, then, as we, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, then you will get that for what you, uh, what you intended. So if you stop committing sin, for example, let's look at some examples. For example, the person who is a thief, for example, and they use a ladder in order to break into someone's house. However, on one occasion, their ladder is too short. Their, their ladder is too short that they're unable to reach the window in order to get in the house and to steal from the people. So due to the fact that their ladder is too short, they abandon that. They say, I'm not going to break in this house. Forget it. My ladder's too short. I'm going to stop. So they didn't commit the sin that night. They're still, uh, that's still uh, an act of sinfulness. Although they abandoned the sin, but they abandoned it for the wrong reason. They abandoned it not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not because they felt sorrow, but simply because they didn't have the tools in order to commit that crime, which was a longer ladder. So they left it. Maybe they're going to commit it the next day with a longer ladder or go to another house or whatever the situation is. So this illustrates for us the importance that uh, a person should abandon the sin for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having sin sincerity to Allah. Another example is a person who's going to give sadaqah or charity, uh, but and and or or the person who who doesn't give charity. In fact, they they refuse to give charity, and they they and they so they never give charity, but they and they want to repent to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala at the same time. So. And, and, and regarding the charity, we're actually talking about the zakat, the wajib charity. So something that they must pay. So the person who has abandoned this is a wicked sinner. You know, this is a major sin. Even the, the Abu Bakr and Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, during the time of their khalifa, the khalifa of Abu Bakr, they fought those people. And so they fought those, those people who didn't pay the zakat. And that they, you know, 
regarded, some of them were disbeliever, considered disbelievers, that they refused to pay the zakat. They refused to pay the zakat for different reasons. Some of them were disbelievers in the law. They said, we don't have to pay the zakat. Uh, you know, so they uh, made enkar of the wujub. You know, they denied the fact that it was an obligation. So those people left the fold of Islam. They said, we don't have to. We only had to pay it in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Then there was another group of them who, who left paying the zakat for... Um, you know, for other reasons that that may not have taken them out of the fold of Islam. But regardless, they fought all of them. And the shahid here, the main point, point is, is that a person, it shows how serious this sin is, and the person who neglects or refuses to pay the zakat, and they might feel sorrow, this is not sufficient for them. But rather... They have to be. They have to leave that sin. How would they leave not paying zakat by paying zakat? So they have to pay those those things that they had neglected to pay to make up for what for this that sinfulness. Uh, another example would be the individual who's neglected to uh, do righteous deeds and and be righteous towards their parents. And we already know, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa'budullah wala tushriku bi shayin." Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, worship Allah and do not uh, associate partners with him. But the ayat I'm looking for, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكُمْ أَلَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and your Lord has commanded you to worship him and him alone and to your parents be righteous. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with being righteous all throughout the Qur'an. Letting us know this is one of the highest deeds. And the Prophet ﷺ listed it with one of the best deeds you can do after worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after prayer and after tawheed, of course. And with this, the person who refuses this is, a, is committing a, a, a major sin, aquku walidain. And if a person does not, even if they, uh, they have sincerity or they exhibit, they feel sorrow for their to and, and want to make toba to Allah, but they continue to be disobedient to their parent, parents, and they disrespect their parents. Then, in this situation, they are they still have not completed toba, and they are, uh, un, un, and they are not considered the people of toba until they abandon that sin, which is being disobedient to the parents, and that they begin to, uh, be kind and gentle to their parents. Another example is those people who uh, are disrespectful also to the, who, who don't keep the ties of kinship, that they, they break the ties of kinship. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all of our shortcomings with regards to our parents and our ties of kinship and, and, all, and all of our sins, in fact. And so the person who doesn't maintain the ties of kinship, you know, with their, their close uh, kin, you know, their, uh, their elders, their, their grandparents, their... Uh, maybe their brothers and sisters, and maybe also the uh, their aunts and their uncles and and, and and so forth. Then this is also a a very serious sin that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has rebuked the people who don't maintain the uh, the ties of kinship and commanded us to do so. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam let us know that's a major sin. So until you abandon that sin then your toba will not be accepted because in fact you are still making hajir or you know uh, from from your 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 near of kin you're still not trying to be close to them and still avoiding them still not calling them and visiting them in wh whatever other ways uh, that you can maintain those ties and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our shortcomings ameen ya rabbil alameen uh and there's many countless examples. Another important example might be the person who is uh, involved in, uh, for example, uh, interest. And this is important to talk about because many of our brothers and sisters, for example, they believe you know that it's a necessity to go to college, and 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 that is very important in this, especially in this global economy in this time and age. However, they are willing to do it by any means, by even taking the muharram. And going, getting student debt and student loans, and this causes a hardship on them. And they are 
causing a hardship on themselves in the hereafter as well. So in the dunya and the hereafter, they're losing. And uh, as an aside, you see often many times people who don't even get decent jobs and they've taken out vast amount of interest to pay off college. They have college college debt many years after graduating from the universities and still have a uh, very meager em employment, if employment at all. And so then all they have is a big debt. So they put stress and struggle on their on their entire life and they'll be facing this debt for years and years to come. And then in the hereafter, who knows the punishments that they'll receive? And it's mentioned in authentic hadith of the Prophet Wasallam about some of the, the punishments for those people who... Uh, who took interest and may Allah protect us from that and forgive our brothers and sisters who have taken that and bless them to come back and leave that. So the shahid here is that you must leave that sin. So it's an incumbent for that person to free themselves from interest. And if they have this debt, then they must strive their best to finish off this debt and, uh, and, and pay at least the principal of the debt and remove themselves from from indebtedness and from interest. Uh, and then there's countless other examples, a person who backbites. And, it, and in that situation, it involves the honor and the, um, and the uh, you know, uh, of another individual. That if a person is backbiting them, it, it involves the, the honor and the sacredness and the rights of others. So in this situation, they must uh, then, in order to make toba and, and repentance for this, then they need to, uh, you know, seek forgiveness from that individual as well, as well as the other acts of of repentance. That they should go to that person and 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 say, please forgive me for, you know, what my tongue, uh, some of the things I might have mentioned behind your back about you. Wa and seek forgiveness from that person, and then seek forgiveness from their Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so these are just some examples, and it shows us the importance that we must have sincerity to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we must stop doing those actions uh, of disobedience. Um, and this, you know, these these actions... The action of Toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is azim, and it is something we must strive our best to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave ourselves and remove ourselves from the environments that will cause us to go back in those sins. And this brings up the next uh, condition in which we have already, pre prior to the sitting, mentioned is that the action. Uh, uh, that, you know, the sinfulness that a person was engaged in, that they must strive to abandon that in totality. And so by abandoning that, that means they are striving to meet the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is connected with the right of your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala to be worshipped alone, that you avoid those things which he has commanded and do those things which he has uh, you avoid those things which he has prohibited and do those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. And that is a part of taqwa Allah And that is a part of your iman. And that is a part of, uh, you know, meeting the conditions of tawbah. Is that you refrain from the, the sinfulness. And so, um, it is absolutely necessary to leave that. And... With regards to that, with regards to that, another important point that must be mentioned is the importance of hiding your sins. Is that if a person uh, has sinfulness, do not be a poet, person who boasts and brags about your sins. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about this, about the one who has relations with their wife, wife during the evening, and then they boast about it during the day or, or something, or they committed such and such sin, and then they boast about it. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Kullu um, uh, kullu ummati muafi illa mujahirin." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "All of my nation uh, shall be granted forgiveness except the mujahirin. Mujahirin are those people who 
advertise their sins. You know, they commit sinfulness and then they go about and 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 brag about the sins that they they did. And uh, in another uh, narration, the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned, he said, an, an individual commits a deed uh, during the night. However, he is screened by a law. In the morning, he declares, oh, so-and-so, I committed such and such misdeed yesterday. However, he spent the previous night in a state of being screened by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nevertheless, in the morning, he is removed from the screen of Allah by himself. So this hadith here shows us, and this is a hadith, uh, I believe in Sahih, uh, Sahih uh, it's mentioned in uh, Bukhari and Muslim, I believe. And in this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi illustrated for us, which needs very little explanation, but shows us the importance of covering your own sins. That if you've committed uh, a crime, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has screened you, meaning no one knew about it, don't advertise it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for any way that we have bragged, because often what you'll find, unfortunately, uh, amongst men, is you'll, you'll find that sometimes they begin to talk about, and maybe the sin was from a long time ago, you know, uh, their, their actions with women, their actions with, you know, I used to do this and I used to do this as a Muslim. You know, as a new Muslim. So it's very, we have to be very cautious about this and not bragging about our sinfulness, especially when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has screened it for us, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has covered that sin for us, and that's between you and your Lord. But then you go and you break that, that, uh, that, that covering, so to speak, and you begin to brag about what you did. And speak about, it. I committed zina last night. I committed adultery. I watched this last night. I drank this last night. I listened to this last night. I was backbiting last night. And it was it was so fun. Or, you know, whatever the situation is. But cover your sins. Because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive the mujahideen. Those people who advertise their sins. They're outward and open with their sins. With regards to being the Mujahideen, a group from, from uh, amongst the scholars, they mention that if an individual committed a misdeed or a sin, which warrants a specific legal punishment, uh, then it is permissible for him to present himself to the leader, uh, you know, and the person who is there to uh, establish a punishment. So, for example, if you're in a Muslim country and you commit uh, a sin which is punishable by the Sharia, then you can, as was the case of the uh, of Ghamadiyya, the uh, radiallahu ta'ala anha, the woman, she committed uh, adultery. And she presented herself to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for punishment. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't want to hear her case, but she persisted and she wanted the punishment because she wanted forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered her to go away until she had the baby and until she suckled the baby. And then when she suckled the baby, she actually returned. And it shows you the taqwa of the people, the awaleen, the, the, the salaf of this ummah, that how, how the, 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 the taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jal that they had, that they, they feared Allah, not like us. We commit a major sin and we want to do everything we can to not have, not have the punishment. And to not be chastised and so forth. So they actually feared Allah so much, she presented herself and she was stoned to, to death. Anha. And the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned that her her her, her toba was so so um, was so great that it, you know it, it was something alim and that uh, you know that required taqwa in iman. However, we are different than that. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins that we do. So the scholars mention that if a, and, and that's um, from that hadith that illustrates for us, that if a person does a sin, a major sin, which is linked to a penalty in the Sharia, then they can present themselves to the Muslim authority. And again, I want to emphasize the Muslim authority, not uh, in America that you go to the imam and you've committed adultery and you expect to be stoned to death or 
or punched in the face as some communities do and, and all these things. No, this is not uh, permissible for us to do these these actions and do the hadood like this. That this requires a Muslim authority and it requires the Muslims being in control of the the area and able to protect their community, which is the case that you have in Muslim uh, uh, Muslim countries. So it is not for us to implement those those punishments for those offenses. Uh, and also that uh, related to other forms of uh, sin, it is preferable to avoid disclosing your sin. So, for example, a person who committed a sin, for example, in America, that they drank alcohol or they committed fornication or something, then they should hide their sins. They should not advertise their sins. They should hide it and they should make toba to Allah. They should come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent. But they should not advertise and tell the people I committed such and such sin last night. Uh, you know, and we don't have to go to the imam and there's no priesthood and, and so forth, which you have in other faiths. You do not need to go to the imam and confide in him and say, oh, imam, I committed adultery. What should I do? No, but rather you, that's between you and your Lord. You make toba, you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you seek his forgiveness, you quit the sin, you feel sorrow, and you have sincerity in your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not go back to that sin. And that is sufficient. That is sufficient. And that is uh, very important for us to understand and very important for us to begin to uh, to. To practice, and those are just some of the aspects of Toba. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our Toba and accept our forgiveness during this holy month of Ramadan. And may Allah Tabarak wa Taala bless us with Amn Nafi and Rizqan Taibu Amn Al Muntakabilan. Wassalamu Alaikum Wa Sallam Ala Nabiyyina Muhammad Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam.